All right, so coming up next is Victoria Kalmanovic. Uh, so Victoria is an engineering team lead at Aspectiva. She'll be our next and uh, final Ignite session before the 15 minutes break. Victoria, thank you for joining us. Thank you for having me. I'm really glad you joined my talk. And today I'll talk about two of my greatest passions, which is musicals and software. So my name is Victoria. Thank you, Liran, for the introduction. And I'm a software team lead at Aspectiva, which is a Walmart company. And I'm also a huge musicals fan. And what is a musical? It's a performance which combines song, dance, and theater. During every performance, you get to experience the entire range of emotions, happiness, sadness, fear, hope. All these feelings, song, dance, and theater are integrated into one amazing act. So this one night before the coronavirus outbreak, I went to the theater. And while I was watching a play, it hit me. Theater is for actors. A ballet is for dancers. A concert is for singers. But musical theater, on the other hand, combines all of the above. In order to perform in a musical, you need to do singing, dancing, and acting. Does this multidisciplinary approach sound familiar? This is how I feel when I create software. I need to know plenty of technologies and have people skills and be familiar with different stacks in order to stay ahead. So that's a musical. And you know, in musicals, sometimes the leading character bursts into song about when in life or where in life they wish to be when Simba from The Lion King wishes to be king and Roxy Hart from Chicago wishes to be famous. This song is called the I Want Song. The I Want Song comes early in the first act when a character sings about their desires and what motivates them. Just like Tevia from Fiddler on the Roof says, if I were a rich man, he'd basically do all of the things and you know exactly what he's dreaming of. But you, the audience, won't be able to relate to the I Want Song unless the characters make the song relatable. And how do they do it? By justifying their actions. In musicals, the singing characters don't only stand and sing on the stage, they act while they sing. When you're on the stage, you justify your actions and your decisions. In Hercules, when Hercules sings about going to the distance and finding his parents, why does he lift his head and look at the, and look at the stars when he talks about getting help by the gods? In A Little Shop of Horror, when Audrey dreams of a house in the suburbs, why does her voice tremble when she speaks of her future children? Every move needs to be justified or it will look out of place and will jeopardize the song's credibility. When we make software-related decisions, we need to keep in mind that this also requires justification. If we make a decision to refactor a piece of code, we need to be able to explain why. When we choose to prioritize one task over the other, we need to be able to explain why. If we're facing issues that keep us from completing our tasks, we need to be able to explain why. This justification really helps everyone who is working around us. And just like actions on stage, this helps people relate to you better. And when you justify your decisions and people relate to you better, you can get things done much more effectively. And I know your team probably isn't made of a cowardly lion, a heartless tin man, and a brainless scarecrow following you blindly. But you can still be a Dorothy and lead it over the rainbow when you're delivering code and features. We always talk about ownership and impact in my company. We don't believe in half a process. There's no just stretch a piece of code and now it's somebody else's problem. We are our own feature owners, and so the end-to-end -end responsibility is ours. If I need to get something done and I depend on other people, I'm the Dorothy. I have to find a way to motivate the people I need. They aren't necessarily on my team. I might need cooperation from another product manager, a different QA, teammates from parallel teams, or any other stakeholder. I'm responsible to driving my team to success. There's no place like home, and there's no sense like ownership. Another thing we can learn from I Want songs is the distinction between the short and the long run. When you write your I Want song, what will it say? Look ahead and think. Where are you going professionally? Do you want to be the best people manager in the world? Do you want to be such a great architect that your name will precede you? Do you want to be a keynote speaker? Remember Tracy from Hairspray? She wants more than anything to be a star. From the moment she understands that she needs to work hard and convince everyone she's the right person for a TV show role to be on track to becoming a star, there's nothing that can stop her from getting there. This approach can be life-changing for us. We get so caught up in our short-term goals that we don't allow ourselves to think long-term. Understanding our long-term goals is as important as short-term goals. So make sure you set these goals alongside a plan of how to get there. And what comes after the I One song? Yes, the I'm Great song. The I'm Great song is sung by someone who can sing an I Want song because there's nothing left for them to want. They're accomplished, popular, and undisputed masters of their field. It's mostly sung by villains, but we can all learn a thing or two from a musical villain. 
And just like Tamatoa from Moana says, I'm too shiny. Watch me dazzle like a diamond in the rough. Strut my stuff. My stuff is so shiny. When you get to this point, it's either you know all there is to know in the software world or you've settled really well in your comfort zone. Either way, it's a great point to reach because it's probably your career's junction and you get to reflect and calculate your next steps, which is always fun. So in conclusion, write your own I want song, justify yourself along the way, own your decisions and take the lead. Don't forget to think long term, take the time to reflect and eventually you'll sing your own great song. Just like Barbara Streisand, you're the greatest stars. I hope this talk will make everyone a musicals fan like me and I've already written my I want song. How about you? Thank you. That was awesome, Victoria. Thank you so much. I like the uh, forward thinking kind of uh, insights here. Thank you. All right, I don't see that we have any other questions for uh, any of the talks. Uh, still useful and uh, great content. So uh, I'm gonna uh, break it up with uh, going on for our 15 minutes break, uh, almost like a 20 so. So um, thank you, as, uh, I wanna thank you again again for joining us, uh, Victoria, Sabina, and Moran. And I uh, hope I'll see you on the chat and later on on the talks as well. Thank you, bye. Bye-bye.